The Wealthy Life is brought to you by investment dealer Raymond James. Life well planned. See what a Raymond James advisor can do for you. We're back, and with us today is Ian Douglas, an experienced financial advisor with some great tips on creating your own pension-like income in retirement. Ian, welcome to the show. Thank you. So how did you get interested in this business in the first place? How did you get started? Well, I, I took a business degree at UBC, and my first job was a commercial lender at a bank. But I had a bit of a challenge in that sometimes people would come to me with good credit, good collateral, and I'd want to do, uh, give them a loan, but the bank wouldn't let me. So uh, that was a bit challenging. So I thought I'd go someplace where if they, what they wanted, we could provide them. So you want to have a little bit more control over the help that you were able to give people. Exactly. Oh, that'd be frustrating to see good people with good credit not getting the loan they needed to get ahead. It is frustrating from the bank's point of view. They may only want a certain percentage in each industry. Yes. So you bring in a potential client. They're wonderful, but you can't help them. So on the investment side, tell me a little bit about what you do for people. Well, the first thing I do when I meet people is I find out what they want, what their expectations are, and what their financial situation is now. And as people are planning for retirement, because I think that's probably one of the most common questions investment professionals get asked, is either how much do I need to save for retirement, or for those people who are already retired, how can I generate income so that I don't outlive my money? They want to live today and later. Are those the types of clients that you work with? Yes, there's people in the growth phase of their investing where they're working and saving. And then there's the same people at one point get to the point where they're living off their capital. So how many people would you say have a pension plan or fortunate enough to have a proper government or employer pension plan? I would say about 30% of the people that I run into have a large enough pension plan to live on. So that means there's roughly two thirds of the population that need to go out and do it themselves. Yes. So at what age should people start planning for their retirement and creating their own pension plan? Well, the first part of it is actually getting your education, getting your career going, because if you don't have a good education and a good career, it's very hard to save any money. So you're very pro post-secondary education. You think it's a good use of money for people to carry on and get a degree? Yes. Well, whether it's a, a trade or whether it's university, if you can get yourself a good marketable skill that pays you a good income, then you have a chance of having a decent life and saving some money. Because if you don't have a good income stream, it's going to be very difficult to live, isn't it? Yeah, then all your money is going just to survive. And no savings. Exactly. So you mean you can't build a pension plan without saving money? Un unfortunately, There's that's no magic true. wand that people can wave? Well, we, we, they, it's called lottery tickets, but it doesn't work very often. <laughs> what, <laughs> one in 14 million, I think. Well, if you feel lucky. <laughs> so what does it mean when we say creating your own pension plan? How do you describe that to someone? Well, what we're doing is we're taking someone's regular savings and gradually building a portfolio of usually now blue chip, dividend paying, mostly Canadian stocks. And that way they can grow with the company over time the dividends tend to go up over time and with the compounding nature surprisingly it, it grows to quite a nice amount if they have a good savings plan. So while you're in the growth mode buying good quality stocks can help you build the wealth and then those same stocks because they have that dividend stream is that how people get their pension income? Yes now market conditions change over time at one point you could get great returns from government bonds but unfortunately today you can't. So like the early 80s, 18% return on things, sounds great, doesn't it? Oh, exactly. At one point, I think there was 18-year or 20-year government bonds paying 18%. Wow. So you didn't have to take a lot of risk then. No, although the downside is inflation was also really high and it wouldn't buy you very much the following year. It still worked out okay if that's what you did. Yeah. <laughs> Be nice to lock in then forever exactly. in today's interest rate environment. So what are some of the common pitfalls that you see people making when they're investing, planning for their pension? Um, in terms of types of investments, are they, like from a risk level perspective, are people a little bit too conservative or too aggressive? Are you seeing that? Well, both of those can be problems. Um, what we've all heard about is somebody we know or heard about that 
invested their money in either a scheme or just took too much risk and wasn't diversified and took a large loss. And it takes away their confidence that the process makes sense. Yeah, and I've heard that story before too, where you've got someone who has no real investment experience other than they placed a bet on one stock that their neighbor told them was a sure thing, and they lost everything, and they think all stocks are the same there on after, and they're not. So it sounds like you tend to steer your clients to the really high quality, good, good quality investments that are going to pay a consistent income stream. We really try to get the more steady, reliable companies, so we're not trying to find a company that's going to cure cancer or is going to discover the next mine. We're trying to find a company that doesn't, we don't have to be 100% right, it'll still make money. You know, when it comes to setting up your own pension plan, I think a lot of people don't realize that their employer actually puts in a chunk of money to the pension plan, that's great. But the employee also puts in, I know my husband's on a pension plan, but 9% of his earnings goes into that pension plan, automatic payroll deduction. So if the average investor without a pension plan was disciplined enough to save that 9 or 10% of their income every year and invest it properly, do you think that would be enough to generate a nice income stream later in life? Yes, I do. If you can save 10% of your income and invest it well, you'll be surprised how much money, capital you have when you're ready to retire. So what do, do people struggle with that savings idea or do they struggle with the investment options? Which is, which is the harder battle? Well, most of the people that come to me have already won the battle and saved. Because if you don't have any money, there's no reason to go to a financial advisor if you don't plan to save anything. Yes. But uh, I think what most people come to me, they already have the building blocks and the common sense in place. They just want to really make sure that they don't go off track. Right. They don't want to invest in that bad investment that's going to derail their plan. And your type of investing for those people who already have wealth sounds like it's more focused on then the income generation so that they can fund their lifestyle going forward. Yes, we wouldn't want to be in the situation where half of our clients that came in on one day made a fortune and the other half that came in another day lost money. We want to make sure that every one of our clients has a good result. And there's always going to be someone somewhere else that made more money. They bought this stock, they bought that stock. But slow and steady wins the race. But we wanted, you know, close to 100% reliable that over time everyone's going to do well. Well, Ian, thank you so much for being on the show today. I think the key takeaways are save money, start early, and invest wisely. Thanks, Sybil. When we return, is it possible to prepare for the unexpected? Find out after the break.